What's up everybody, we're back with another raid guide and today we're taking a look through the eyes of the Alliance at King Rastakan. So I'll be going over all the mechanics, how they work and our overall strat for this fight. It's a four phase fight with lots to cover, so let's start off with the overall mechanics and abilities. Rastakan himself have a few abilities he will use over multiple phases. Starting off with Scorching Detonation, a 5 sec channel on the tank, ticking fire damage over 5 seconds. At the end of the channel it explodes for a large amount of fire damage to everyone. Damage however is reduced by distance, so whichever tank gets it make sure to run away from the raid before you blow him up. And Plague of Toads summons free toads which start at him and move away to the edges of the room then despawn. If they run into someone everyone within 5 yard takes a lot of nature damage every 1.5 sec over 12 seconds and this stacks. They also leave behind green pools on the ground wherever they jump, standing in a pool does a lot of nature damage and slows you. Don't touch the toads, don't stand in the pools. And during phase 1 you fight 3 mini bosses, they do not have a shared health pool, around 15 seconds into the encounter, Rastakan himself will join the actual fight. The mini bosses are Prelate Zalan, Seal of Purification, Laser Beam from the Sky, Chases One Person, You Just Kite the Beam, Don't Stand in the Beam. You have Siege Breaker Rokia, Meteor Leap Style, Picks a Target, Marks them on a 5 second cast, and when it cast ends, he jumps onto the target, dealing like 800k nature damage, splits evenly with everyone within 8 yards. Rokia also uses Crushing Leap, he casts this immediately after Meteor Leap deals damage, he jumps at the tank that currently has threat, deals a huge amount of physical damage and applies crushed, which is you take 500% increased damage from any other crushing leap, so tank swap after every leap. And Headhunter Galvana, Grievous Axe, throws axe at a random player, deals a large amount of physical damage and it applies a dot. The dot deals ticking physical damage every 1.5 sec until the player is healed above 90%. And Rastakan himself also uses Greater Serpent Totem, summons a fire spitting snake totem, uses Serpent's Breath, deals large amount of fire damage plus ticking fire damage. It's a frontal cone so don't stand in front of the snake. And Binding Soul, all damage dealt to Rastakan is split evenly between the three mini bosses, which means Rastakan himself is immune-ish during phase 1. So for phase 1 there's two ways to do it. First one will result in lower overall damage during phase 1 but less mechanics to deal with. Due to the fact that Rastakan doesn't take any damage, he just splits it, you can tank Rastakan on the far side of the room with just the tank and one healer helping. Doing this essentially removes all of Rastakan's phase 1 abilities from the fight. Totem is no longer relevant, Rastakan's fire AoE that explodes from the tank becomes relevant and the plague of toads gets really easy to dodge. Or you can tank all three mini bosses on top of each other close to the middle of the room and also stack Rastakan when he becomes active. On top of this heavy range and healers spread out around the room, it makes dodging toads and fire totem a bit easier and it helps during phase 2. When the serpent totem spawns, swap DPS to it to make sure to be out of range of its serpent breath. You can also skip the totem if you want and just avoid it, but we thought it was safer to just kill it. Your primary target should always be Roka and you just cleave an AoE away from him. Try and keep the adds together as they die, this will make phase 3 a bit simpler, or pull Roka out far away when he's about to die and kill him off. This depends on how you want to handle phase 3, and I will go over that a bit later. Other than that, if you're chased by laser beam, kite it outside of the raid, dodge the toads, and the tank should run away from the raid when affected by scorching detonation. When the last mini boss dies, phase ends, everyone gets stunned for a little RP moment, and phase 2 starts. When phase 2 starts, Bonzamdi joins the fight, he takes no damage, however, you can still use dots on him for single target damage increase. When Rasta Khan takes damage again, he will stop casting Serpent Totem, but he will still use Scorching Detonation and Plague of Toads. However, he's got a couple of new tricks up his sleeve. Starting off with Plague of Fire, several people will get a fire debuff which deals ticking fire damage. After 1.5 sec, affected players explode and passes the debuff to anyone within 7 yards. Don't hug each other. And Zombie Dust Totem, mind controls a player, kill the totem, don't kill the mind control player. And Bonsamdi has some abilities as well. First out is his Aura of Death, applies a debuff to anyone within 30 yards of him every 3 seconds. This debuff deals around 3k shadow damage every 3 seconds and it stacks. He also uses Death's Door, debuffs a random target, deals ticking shadow damage every 2 seconds for 8 seconds. When the debuff expires you leave a Death Rift at the player's location. 
These rifts will come in effect in phase 3. He also uses Caress of Death. Casted ability on the tank deals a huge amount of shadow damage and prevents all healing to the target for 5 seconds. So to deal with phase 2 you want to tank one Zamdi on a far side of the room and Rastakhan close to the middle. All players except one tank and one healer should be near Rastakhan and the healer healing the one Zamdi tank needs to rotate with other healers due to the stacking dot. One tank as I said needs to hold one Zamdi recommended someone that can clear his withering debuff like a Prodidin or Blood Decay with spell war bubble or AMS. If you don't have either of these tanks you will need to tank swap every now and then. Easiest timing is to swap when Rastakhan's tank is running away with the detonation. Scorching detonation tank just run over to one somebody and taunt and you swap there. On top of this make sure you're always spread seven yards apart so you don't spread the fire debuff all over the raid. Continue dealing with Rastakhan's abilities from phase one in the same way as phase one. Players that get death's door debuff should try to position the doors close to each other towards the sides where you tank Bonsamdi. At 60% he transitions into phase 3. In this phase you will split your raid in half, one group for the living realm and one for the dead realm. In the realm of the living you fight Rastakhan and the dead you fight Bonsamdi. In the living realm Rastakhan will spawn free phantom adds. All three have undying relentlessness, makes them immune to all forms of crowd control 60 seconds after spawning. There's three different phantoms, one of them is retribution, uses grave bolt, moderate shadow damage to a random player and seal of one Zamdi places green soak icons on the ground looks kind of like kill Jaden circles but green deals a large amount of shadow damage to the soaker if not soaked deals an even larger amount of shadow damage to everyone in the raid so you have to stand in them and another ad called rage uses necrotic smash pounds the ground dealing a large amount of shadow damage and decreases healing taken by 75% for eight seconds generally unavoidable tank smash if needed tank swap after this. And last out is Slaughter. Deals shadow damage to random enemies but it also uses focused demise. A channeled spell deals ticking shadow damage every second for five seconds. However it's only interruptible by the player who gets it on him or her. So whoever gets targeted by focused demise you have to interrupt it. During phase three Rustakan will still use scorching detonation and plague of fire but he also starts using Buonsamdi's boon. Increases damage dealt by two percent every 15 seconds and it stacks. And Rastakhan himself will use Death's Door in this phase instead of Bonsamdi. And in the realm of the dead you have Bonsamdi. He uses Caress of Death. He now randomly targets people with it instead of just a tank. And he uses Inevitable Reaping. Begins drawing in all enemies and places a circle of death beneath him. If anyone gets pulled into the circle under Bonsamdi they die instantly. Other than that he also has Dread Reaping. Small moving shadow discs or shadow orbs. Standing in one deals a large amount of shadow damage per second. These orbs or discs, whatever you want to call them, also move into the living realm if they ever pass over a death rift. So how do we deal with phase 3? Well it's a bit of a phase race this one. Phase ends when one Zamdi hits 50%, he runs away, everyone gets sent back to the living realm and you enter phase 4. You must push out of this phase before Rastakhan's increasing damage overwhelms you, so using bloodlust here is preferred. Have your death realm team pre-assigned. It's exactly half of your raid so shoot your top single target DPS players and specs, send as few healers as possible but enough healers to make sure people aren't dying. When Buonsamdi begins casting Buonsamdi's boon, have the death realm team begin running to Buonsamdi to ensure they're the closest players to him. Just be prepared for this when Rastakhan is getting close to 60%. For the Rastakhan team continue dealing with his abilities from phase 2 and don't touch the death's door. The phantom adds will spawn at the beginning of phase 3 and they spawn from the corpses of the old ads you killed in phase 1. So as I mentioned earlier there's a couple of ways to deal with the ads in this phase. You can do like we do, stack them up on Rastakhan and cleave them down. This results in more mechanics to deal with at the same time, a lot more tank damage and a lot more healing required but it makes the phase go a bit faster as you're able to AoE everything. Or you can root the big ad called Rage and have a lot less tank damage and mechanics to worry about. Due to this, as I mentioned earlier, you can either kill off the phase 1 adds on top of each other or pull the big one Roka out in phase 1 before he dies so you can root his spirit rage in phase 3. So if you want to AoE them, kill them off on top of each other. If you want to root, kill Roka away from him. The ad called Retribution is by far the most dangerous one so always start cleaving from that ad in phase 3. Make sure someone always soaks the green circles on the ground and whoever gets targeted by focused demise, remember you're the only one who can interrupt it. 
Down in the death realm, you want to make sure you push as much damage as possible and make sure you don't step in the shadow orbs. On top of this, you have to every now and then clear all your withering stacks. You do this by stepping on a death rift. However, this will trigger an AoE in the living realm. It's important that you don't all clear your stacks at the same time. So we simply had four or five players clear their stacks at a time and healers called out that they had to wait a bit with clearing. And when one Samdi starts pulling you towards him, just run away. If you get too close, you will instantly die. And when one Samdi reaches 50%, he runs away and phase four starts. Phase 4 is pretty much a burn phase. Rastakhan's old abilities remain Scorching Detonation, Plague of Fire, Plague of Toad, Death's Door, and he also uses Buon Samdi's inevitable reaping ability in this phase, which works the same way, get too close during it and you will instantly die. So what you want to do here is clean up any remaining phantom adds when this phase starts if you didn't manage to get them down before. Everyone should try to stay spread out for Plague of Fire. You really, really don't want to spread it during this phase. Dodge Plague of Toads as always. Be careful during Inevitable Reaping. If you happen to run over any rifts during this phase, you will still trigger a raid-wide AoE, so be on the lookout. And due to the fact that there will be like a million gates up, you will pretty much be swarmed by the discs or the green orbs during this phase, so make sure that you dance around and avoid these at all costs. So if you place your gates well during phase 2 and 3, you will have an easier time dodging in phase 4. The raid's position and the boss position doesn't really matter during this phase. Move the boss away from any gates or rifts and range stay spread so you again don't chain the plague of fire. And I think that pretty much covers everything. If you have any questions at all make sure to hit me up in the comments below. And don't forget to check out my Patreon if you'd like to support my work with the guides. And as always if you like these kind of videos make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave me a like and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.